This is the International AQA Certificate for GCSE and we're looking at some more photosynthesis. We have uh, looked at a previous video at the equation of photosynthesis and the things that are required for it. So it's carbon dioxide plus the plus water are going to give uh, glucose plus uh, oxygen coming out the other end and it requires sunlight and chlorophyll. You also needed to know the um, chemical equation for that and make sure you can balance it correctly as well, which is quite a simple one with sixes uh, in front of three of the four um, items on each. We're now going to think about the factors that affect the rate of photosynthesis and clearly from looking at these equations we can see that if we were to alter any of these factors, therefore the result of the amount of photosynthesis and how fast it took place would therefore change. So if we take uh, a number of them in turn, let's start with temperature. Now obviously temperature is not written in the actual photosynthesis equation, <coughs> but being that it is uh, a chemical reaction that's taking place, it's driven using enzymes, we should know from our enzymes work that a change in temperature affects the rate of an enzyme controlled reaction. Uh, it also affects any reaction because of the amount of extra kinetic energy the molecules have got, therefore more effective collisions enabling the reaction to take place uh, quickly. Biological reactions, as we've said, are controlled by biological enzymes and therefore they have an optimum temperature. Typically most biological enzymes function best around about 30 to 40 degrees C depending on their role. Um, so by operating at, having a plant operating at around 30 degrees C it's going to maximise its rate of photosynthesis. Uh, above that Enzymes will denature and therefore the reactions will stop and there will be little photosynthesis, if any, uh, depending on the temperature. Carbon dioxide is in the equation and therefore the more carbon dioxide available, the more uh, glucose can be produced through photosynthesis. And similarly light. Light is required that gives the energy for the reaction to take place. More light means more photosynthesis can take place. Being that the, uh, the sun is responsible for providing the light in most cases of, of plants carrying out photosynthesis in a natural environment, uh, there is often a link between temperature and light as well. So, to look at the effect of each of these in turn, uh, along the bottom axis here is going to be each of these variables in turn, and up the y-axis here is the rate of photosynthesis. So if we take temperature to start with, as you increase temperature initially, so the rate of photosynthesis is also going to increase. But we also know that when we reach an optimum temperature, with key terms again, optimum temperatures uh, of around about 30 to 40 degrees C, that we're going to reach our maximum rate. Above that temperature, as we've already mentioned, the enzymes denature, the reactions stop, and therefore the rate of photosynthesis will plummet back to zero. And that's because this, in this case, with temperature, it got too high, and therefore the rate of reaction has actually stopped. And that's what's explained here. So above 40 degrees C, enzymes denatured, active sites has changed shape, so it doesn't fit, the substrate does not fit anymore. And you should refer back to your enzymes video uh, to check on that. Carbon dioxide. As we increase the amount of carbon dioxide available initially, so the rate of photosynthesis will also increase. However, at some point we will reach a level where no matter how much more carbon dioxide we give, the rate of photosynthesis does not increase anymore. It has not dropped to zero like it does here. So this carbon dioxide has not stopped it. photosynthesis happening. It's just reached a maximum rate. So no more photosynthesis can take place any quicker. That therefore means that something else must be stopping it from going any quicker. And that could be usually one of two things. It could be either the temperature of the reaction is too low, or there is insufficient light to uh, improve the rate of photosynthesis. These two are described as limiting factors, key terms again. The same thing can be said for light. Increase the light, 
so the rate of photosynthesis increases up to a certain point beyond that level of light intensity something else is preventing it from going any faster again it doesn't drop to zero because the light is not damaging anything about the photosynthesis reaction so there are other limiting factors which again just on the, on the flip side could be carbon dioxide is insufficient or the temperature of the reaction is insufficient. So what we can actually do with each of these graphs is to draw different lines over the top and this might be a typical sort of uh, question that you saw in an exam paper. So it might give you an experiment where we're looking at carbon dioxide on the x-axis with your rate of photosynthesis going up the y-axis and perhaps this might be 3% carbon dioxide. If they gave you the same experiment but using a much lower concentration of carbon dioxide, say maybe 0.2, we would see that the rate of photosynthesis increased slowly, but then it reached a level, a rate of photosynthesis that was much lower. So it still reached the same plateau as it did when it was a higher concentration, but it just doesn't ever get as high as it still plateaus off, just at a lower level. All right. And that's because lower concentration of carbon dioxide is proving, therefore, that carbon dioxide has an effect because it never gets so high. What we could do is compare each level of carbon dioxide with a different temperature to prove that that is limiting instead. So... 3% carbon dioxide, this top red line, could be at 30 degrees C. Maybe instead of changing our percentage of carbon dioxide, we keep it at 3%, but this green line actually now represents 10 degrees C. So therefore, preventing it from going any higher is because of insufficient temperature. So here we're proving that in this case, temperature is our limiting factor. And the same could be done with any light intensity, or indeed, if we're changing light down the bottom here, limiting factors could be uh, help any of the ones that we've already mentioned. Okay, so they're all interchangeable together. Crucially, and something that's not on this uh, yet, is at this point on the graph, the rising point of the graph. Here we can see, if I read off the graph, if I increase the, con the concentration, in this case of carbon dioxide, further, well, the rate of reaction has also increased. So at this point on any one graph, it's usually carbon dioxide, or in this case, light, that is limiting. And whatever the factor is on the x-axis, if the line is rising, that's the limiting factor. And we know that because... If you increase it, your rate of reaction also increases. Whereas on a flat bit, that's no longer limiting because we're trying to increase it and it's not having any effect. So it must be something else. When we go back to our equation, it's either going to be light or temperature. But uh, it's one of those factors. And it's very important that you're able to uh, use, uh, analyse data and evaluate that uh, in both papers that you might sit uh, at the end of the year. So the final thing to consider is exactly what the glucose is used for, and this has been covered briefly in one of your other videos. And we know that the glucose is built ready for respiration, but it also also stored in the form of starch, so that the plant has some reserves uh, for use later on. So glucose can also be used to make cellulose, which is part of the cell walls, or it can be combined with the nitrates taken from the soil to go on to make proteins that are essential for growth, building those new tissues. But based on this requirement for a plant and the information we now know about uh, limiting factors, we as a human race could actually monopolise upon our knowledge of plant and photosynthesis. Um, and in the farming industry, they do this all the time. So we can modify our crops uh, conditions, maybe within a greenhouse, to control the temperature or control the extra CO2 levels in an enclosed area to maximise the rate of photosynthesis. And by maximising photosynthesis, we can increase yield of the crop, and it's a balancing act between the costs 
of providing the extra CO2 and the temperature and light at different times of the day uh, with the buildings versus how much profit uh, a farmer can actually get from their, from, from their, their crop. Um, and again, questions and evaluation questions, particularly in an exam paper, will refer to these sorts of ideas and ask you to balance the arguments for and against and suggest some reasons as to what this farmer could do to improve the quality of their crop in a short period of time.